Uh, as we went further into the fall, there was more discussion with the group. Uh, the design was a little more developed. Some things were added into the scope. Uh, so at the end of October, we were uh, 9.96 million. And this is construction numbers only. And this is really the number we used um, to create your final budget, um, which you guys went out for financing off of. Uh, so that's really the number that we're comparing uh, our final cost to is that 9.961. Uh, and then uh, as of bidding that we did uh, last, well, I guess we're a week and a half from that now, um, with, with all of the base bids considered into that, we were at 9.588. So we did experience some savings on that. Um, and then there was, there was interest in taking all of the alternates as well. Uh, I'll let Josh talk if he wants to any more on that, but adding all of the alternates in, uh, we were at a final cost for construction at uh, 10816495 And the next sheet really breaks down um, all of those successful bidders and what goes into that construction cost number. I mean, just the, the alternate, the, the subtotal came back uh, under the estimates. And that's why uh, I asked uh, Boyd Jones to from kind of the beginning is to assess all the contractors, assuming that all the alternates would be accepted. Um, I felt that was a better lens, knowing the costs and where the alternate costs were. And just at the feedback from the board that we had board members that really wanted to get as much of the projects done at the high school to make sure that we balanced investment. And other board members that wanted to make sure that we got value out of all the project that really ultimately meant getting as much done as we possibly could with the most value involved based on the numbers and the bid packages back from the bonding it made sense to me to use the alternates and so um, boyd jones evaluated everything through that lens ultimately knowing that if it got to be uncomfortable that we could always back off So as we go to the next sheet, these are these are all of your successful bidders, and uh, it, I do want to say that I've I've gone back and I've talked with uh, each of these companies to verify that uh, everything is good as far as their performance and payment bond. Um, they agreed with the scope documents that were out. Um, so everybody uh, with their base bid amount and uh, any alternates that are accepted. Um, is okay going forward with their price. Uh, I did want to point out a couple of things that uh, that broke pretty well in your favor. Um, the, the very top there, Baker Enterprises had bid package one, three, and five. Uh, having the same contractor doing uh, the dirt work, the utilities, and the concrete uh, brings you some efficiency, takes a little bit of the gray area out of that scope, so I was really happy with that one. Um, and then I thought we had a good mix as far as uh, not really loading anyone up over both of the projects. Uh, they were kind of spread apart. I think the only, the only common prime contractor is the electrician uh, that will be doing both schools. So this sheet, this summary showed their base bid, uh, an amount for change allowance, and then any of the alternates. And to the far right uh, would be their final contract amount. Um, so approving this document is, is basically saying that you agree uh, to enter into agreements with these contractors at those amounts. And then on the bottom of the sheet is just some of the other costs. So you can see what else is involved with your construction project. So you can see the full, the full cost, not just construction. So design fees, um, some of those engineering support tasks, uh, builder's risk insurance, um, and then there, there is a contingency for the owner on the bottom of that. And then uh, Josh thought it was important to show that you have already uh, paid some of these costs as far as design. Uh, so really you're, you're looking kind of at the remaining project cost as you're looking at your financing. And I'll let Josh talk to any more of that if he wants to. 
Yeah, so this is the, the financing um, that'll be approved. Uh, you know, we've already approved the, the bidding and then the bid documents, the final, the final bid documents will be done next month, well, Tuesday. Uh, since we've received those from the attorney um, and we expect to have uh, our, our, that cash or the, the bonding proceeds deposited into a bank account on March 2nd. Uh, and that'll be uh, a little over $11.5 million. Um, and that also includes paying bonding attorney and then the bonding agent um, to pay off those things. So our, our remaining proceeds will be enough to cover that $11.45 million to do all the projects. Uh, a couple of things I do want to point out uh, that Mark kind of hit on here that we've talked about a couple times, but just to, to bring a light to it, um, the change allowance, uh, that those are those small things that come up in construction um, that each of those contractors is, is budgeted for. Uh, we, can, uh, we can take care of things as they come up. They don't, they can't just go take that money. They have to use a change order. Uh, and now those funds are there to help cover those costs. And then if we don't do change orders, which hopefully we don't have very many of them, uh, they do the, if the, the packages were done right, the contracts are done right, and if Kate and her team got all the design right, uh, for the most part, uh, the, that $260,000 will never leave our bank account. It will uh, it'll just remain in our hands and we can do something else with it. And then the same thing down here for owner contingency, that $150,000, um, that is for um, what I would maybe consider is like scope creep, where we get into some areas and, and we're like, oh, well, we're here. We can take advantage of this opportunity. While the contractors are here, we ask them to kind of do something outside of the contract. And those are driven pretty much by me, Kevin, and then the board, uh, if we want to go outside and do something different. And those things do come up from time to time. Uh, as you dig into the project, there are opportunities and we just have to evaluate them on their own merits, but we do budget for it so that um, we understand where those dollars could potentially come from. Uh, we do try to control those uh, as best as possible, uh, but opportunities will arise and we just have to evaluate them on their own merits. Yeah, that was a good point, Josh, that I, that I didn't bring up. So any of the, the Boyd Jones reimbursable fees, uh, our general conditions and those things, Basically, you're only paying uh, actual costs you know, plus a fee on all of those things. So, um, you know, if we're not out here as long as we're expecting, uh, or if we don't need um, as much labor cleanup or equipment and those things, um, you're only paying what our actual costs are. So we'll be submitting a detailed billing uh, each month for those. So there's opportunity for savings in those as well. So. Really what you're looking at with that remaining project cost is really your, your budget. Um, it's, not a, it's not a hard fixed cost. Um, in the approval, uh, in the action item, we're, we're asking you to also not only approve the contractors, but to approve all the alternates. Uh, so just real quickly, uh, alternate one, uh, that is the inclusion of all surfaces at Wings Park. So alt one includes uh, new carpet, paint, and ceilings in the art room and in the music room at Wings Park, and then also uh, the gymnasium. So basically every surface in that building will be touched and will look and feel new. Uh, so I think pretty good bar bargain when you consider that the rest of the building is all getting going to be new, then we can basically ensure that every surface in there is upgraded. Alternate 11 is um, new science labs. So again, I think this is a pretty good value when you consider it's uh, kind of relaying out an entire wing of our, of our high school, uh, shuffling some classrooms around and then making two new brand new science labs uh, that include new casework, a new layout, um, new gas, new safety measures, a uh, whole new modern science lab. Uh, alternate 12 is uh, new flooring in the corridor. Uh, so, you know, we're, we're obviously spending a lot of time and energy in the restrooms, entryway, vestibule, and the um, principal's office. Uh, and then, so this basically just extends that work. So there's no unnatural cutoff where those um, additions start and stop. Uh, we take the flooring all the way to the end of every corridor uh, 
in the um, in the high school. Again, I, I think that's a really good value, knowing what we've spent in flooring and other places. And the last one I think is going to maybe get a lot of notice um, and, and and potentially some serious savings for us in heating and cooling costs, and that's replacing all the windows. Um, in the high school uh, with alternate bid 13. So that's new glazing and new windows. Uh, and all the windows that were probably installed sometime in the 80s, uh, many of them are no longer functional um, and they all have um, about half of the possible light uh, features that uh, are capable in them. I know Julie taught in one of those classrooms for a lot of years with uh, minimal light coming in those classrooms. And so this is going to uh, add light by probably over 60% to those windows as we're going to open them all the way up to their full scope uh, of possibility and then uh, do all new glass in there. And that's alternate 13. So um, every classroom, every, every classroom in the main corridors of the high school will have um, new windows and then they'll get some work done to uh, the, the ceiling structure to make sure they can, that the rooms can accept those new windows. I get it right, Mark? You're all over it. All right, anything else? Kate, you have anything to add? Um, no, no, I think you hit it all. Good job. I mean, I, I guess my, my gut is to temper that there are always changes on construction projects, particularly ones with renovation involved, but there are always hidden surprises. Okay, I think we're ready for the next item. If there's no more questions, we'll move on to, uh, thank you, Mark. We'll move on to item number eight, approval of Wings Park and a Winehouse High School remodeling bid package construction contracts and acceptance of alternate bid packages 1, 11, 12, and 13. So um, with that presentation and uh, all the work that's gone into this, uh, one of the points I'm excited about with the, uh, the contractors, I didn't even know you mentioned, uh, if you'll notice that we have different uh, G general contractors for the high school project and for Wings Park. Uh, I think in the current construction labor market, that's going to be to our benefit to have multiple contractors working on separate projects in our district. Uh, it should um, increase productivity and um, decrease slowdown uh, if they would have to be pushing labor from one project to the other to keep them both moving forward, uh, especially with a hard deadline of trying to get into the uh, high school before the school year starts. So I think it's gonna be really important that we have those separate contractors and it was to our benefit that the, con that the bids uh, came out to be low opposite of each other uh, that we can utilize both those teams. So uh, with that being said, I'm, I'm super excited about how this turned out and um, strongly recommend that uh, you accept the uh, bid packages and the contractors that are presented tonight by Boyd Jones and also accept uh, bid packages 1, 11, 12, and 13. I move that we accept the bid packages as presented by Boyd Jones for Wings Park and the high school. Okay. It's been moved by Charlene, second by Julie, that we approve the Wings Park and Hawaiian High School remodeling bid package construction contracts and accept some of alternate bid packages 1, 11, 12, and 13. Is there any discussion? None being heard. All those in favor, raise your hand. Opposed? Motion passes. I will turn the meeting back over to Charlene. Uh, February 16th. Thank you. I need a motion to adjourn. And we adjourn. Oh, pardon. <laughs> I'll second. second. All in favor, raise your hand. A quick note before you all sign off. Um, the meeting is adjourned. It is uh, eight seventeen. No, seven seventeen. Um,
talking with Candace, um, we have boys basketball uh, again next Monday, and we have um, it's federal holiday, so nobody's working here. Um, and so uh, Candace and I concur we should move our, our meeting, our regular meeting from the 15th to 16th. So next Tuesday night. And it'll hopefully increase our attendance. And yep. Candace can be here. <laughs> That will be good. The plan. <laughs> <laughs>